I think it's extremely important uh, for us as educators of engineers and scientists to ensure that social justice is brought into the core part of the technical curriculum. Otherwise, we're really just creating kind of cogs in the machine. So I'm often asked by people who know that I'm integrating social justice with engineering education. Uh, I get asked, why, why should one do that? Um, and I think that the perception among my engineering colleagues is that I'm bringing in a political perspective into engineering, which is presumed not to have a political perspective. But the reality is that, in fact, engineering does have a particular political perspective, and it is a singular perspective that is not articulated and is therefore never challenged. I believe that regardless of motivation, students are ill-prepared to counter injustices without first understanding how they come about even when individual actors might all be said to behave reasonably. Increasingly, we need new ways to ensure that graduates are prepared for their responsibilities as citizens and not just that they're ready for the job market. For the next few years after my undergrad and, and still now, I struggle to connect the lessons of my life experience um, with, with my work, you know, having lived through the war, having experienced firsthand what these weapons do. That's how I became interested in, in social justice and engineers and engineering. Um, and so, you know, for me, this is important because engineers make decisions either explicitly or in my case, complicitly uh, to take part in all kinds of unjust projects like weapons development, but also um, mining on indigenous land, supporting mega projects and destroy communities. Um, and really the list, the list goes on and on, right? The, the overall structure of, of engineering as a profession in the United States um, is directed around national priorities which are set through the federal budget. And because we have been continually increasing our emphasis on military applications, most of the engineering jobs that students have available to them when they graduate are in defense. And the rest of them are largely in corporate America. And a lot of those corporations are defense contractors as well, so it's hard to sort of separate these two things. But it's important to point out how political priorities align with the federal budget and how engineers are then enlisted to do those particular activities. I'm not under any false mindset that, that engineers can single-handedly, um, you know, change anything or, or stop all these things, but need, they need to be part of uh, resistance movements to these things. So they need to take part in indigenous resistance, they need to fight the state, they need to fight police surveillance, they need to fight capitalism. So the question for me is how do I teach engineers to do that and how do I as an engineer do that and remain true and so remain true to my life experiences. And so it wasn't until I became a professor that I truly found a way to integrate my social justice concerns with engineering, and that was really through pedagogy. The biggest way I incorporate social justice in, in my course, which was a professional ethics course, was through my teaching pedagogy. Uh, I tried to run my course in a socially just manner by using uh, Frarian pedagogy to the best of my abilities and resources. Frarian proposed his pedagogy of the oppressed in which learning is a community effort, hierarchy is destroyed as much as possible, the teacher can be a learner, and learners can be teachers. The concerns of the oppressed dominate learning, and reality as is, is questioned. So part of it was making physical changes, so I removed uh, desks and rows from my classroom, my students sat in chairs in a circle, uh, I avoided presentations on a projector screen, used a blackboard sparingly, instead of preferring to write or present on a flip chart. One of the examples I can come up with where I've tried to incorporate um, social justice is in some of the humanitarian engineering projects we've tried to do in senior design. Um, we've worked actively in projects in Honduras and uh, also in um, Uganda, Eastern Africa, parts of Western Kenya. I'm a strong proponent of service learning. I think that it is criminal to have students solving problems in the back of the book when we have so many problems that need to be solved in the real world and students actually enjoy solving those problems more and they can still learn the same technical aspects. So let me give you an example from a, 
kind of core course, uh, a materials processing course, where it usually looks at sort of like the processing of steel um, and some a little bit on, on polymers and ceramics. And what we, what I, what I did with that course in order to turn it into a, a service learning course was I asked the students to take an aspect of materials processing of their own choice. So I had some um, focus on self-directed uh, learning where they're, they're choosing their own, own topic and try to improve the sustainability uh, as a quantifiable metric of the processing technique and, and do a report on it and then publish that report online. Uh, from an educator standpoint is extremely powerful because you're not only giving them the context of you know actually teaching them about the developing world as you're teaching them the engineering but you're also getting them to think about trying to solve those problems uh, when you know there aren't that many positions now where we get engineers to think about those things. So in my thermodynamics class my main strategy is to call attention to the fact that content for the thermodynamics class is, is a choice that someone has made, whether these are textbook publishers or authors that have made this choice, or whether it's me as the instructor writing a syllabus who's made a set of choices. Any course in thermodynamics represents um, not some um, absolute reality of what that discipline is or what that course subject area is, but it represents a set of choices someone has made about what belongs in that class. And so what we see in thermodynamics in particular is that it's not, while the course is ostensibly about energy and you learn, you know, some of the physical laws about energy and then apply them to engineering systems, what you're really learning is a 19th century science around the development of the steam engine um, and around fossil fuel based technologies. And while over time examples have been added and some problems have been added to illustrate some renewable technologies, in the end students aren't really learning the fundamental principles they need to know to work on energy in the 21st century.